Hey, welcome to Weld.com. Today, uh, we're going to mess with the NDT guy. He's over here at the door messing around trying to trying to mess up this video, but I'm going to I'm going to put the Jedi mind hurt on him today. A while back, we were doing a, a video on ultrasound and I asked about different methods. So I'm going to I'm going to mess with him today. This will be kind of fun, entertaining and educational. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to purposely make a weld crack. And how I do that is I'm going to put a piece of copper in it. Now I had these all laid out and they were perfectly straight. And it looks like the camera guy has been over here. Oh, by the way, welcome back camera guy. We're going to have a little fun now, huh? You screw with my copper wires one more time. Man, I'm telling you. Anyway, we got these all laid out and if you put, I'm going to run a root pass in a piece of plate and then I'm going to change processes and kind of spray over the top of these and I'm going to introduce this piece of copper wire down in the weld and weld over the top of it while it's in solution. You know, it kind of mixes in but it purposely makes the weld crack and my attempt into making this weld have a known flaw in it, I'm not going to tell the NDT guy but I want to make it crack internally but I want to kind of hide it from him. I don't want to make it obvious on the very top cap of it. I kind of want it to be hidden. If I can do that, I'll be successful. But we also want to show the process, so I'm going to learn a lot on this one. Anyway, I've got two pieces of wire here. One of them is copper that I stripped out of electrical wiring. The other one is copper coated filler wire that is not going to make a weld crack. That's the same wire that I'm getting ready to weld this joint with. So don't be confused by the two of them. Yes, they're both copper colored, but this baby right here is pure copper. Keep that away from the camera guy. He'll come over here and bend it up again. God dang that guy, man. So um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a short arc root 3 8 plate, which we've done numerous times on camera. We've, we've done x-rays of them. We've bent them. We've done everything, but I just want to get a root in here. And then while I have these fill passes to do, I'm going to put this copper wire in them and I'll, I'll probably spray across the top of them. I'll change gas and spray. So a couple of explanations of what's going on, different processes, and then the NDT process. Let's get going. Okay, I just want to throw a, a root pass in here as normal. Uh, we've done this many a time, but I'll go ahead and explain it again. Rebel 235, 035 wire, 17 and a half volts, 185, 184 on the wire feed speed, 75, 25 gas, about 20 cubic feet per hour. I like to hold this wire up, pointing up, keep it on the leading edge of the pool. We're going to try to film front and back on this thing. Again, this is just the root pass. The fun part comes when we put the piece of copper wire in the fill passes and purposely make the weld crack from there on out and then try to hide it from the old NDT dude and have him detected on his equipment. Here we go, let's go. I'm moving this back and forth slightly, trying to work it a little bit. No, I don't do that. I'm going to buff this out. I'm going to change gas, change settings and everything, get into a spray mode. And uh, we'll show you what happens when we put a piece of copper wire in here and purposely make it crack, make the weld metal crack. All right, I'll be back in a minute. 
Okay, I'm gonna, I, I put a, <clears throat> a quick fill pass in here because I didn't want to fill it up a lot and I didn't want to remelt, restructure my root. I'm in the flat position here and I've changed this up. I've changed nozzles over to a spray nozzle and I'm at 28 and a half volts, 460 on the wire feed speed. My gas is now 92.8, 8%. And I'll do, another, I'll do a big old long video on spray. I like to run spray. I like it a lot. And in any event, we're just gonna throw this over here so we can play Jedi mind tricks with the NDT guy. I have a piece of copper in here and I want this thing to kind of dilute and when it solidifies, it should crack. So let's get going. Okay, I put a, a fill pass in here. So I've done two fill passes in the second one that I did, I welded over a piece of copper wire. I produced the crack, but it's very, very faint. And I do want it in there so that we can see it. I don't necessarily I want it opened up where it's super obvious. So if I can just duplicate that again on the cap. So I'm gonna put another piece in here and we're gonna do our final pass. And I've got this leaned up slightly. So I'll be going very slightly downhill. It's not gonna affect the, the weld or anything, but I wanna do it for one of the camera angles. So here we go. I expect that pop when I get down at the end. Yeah, we have labored to produce some pretty good looking little surface cracks in here. They're very small, but they're in there. I'm gonna buff this so we can kind of hide them with the wire wheel. And uh, you know, the toe's in there and we have reinforcement. For what it is, it's perfect. So let's go play with the NDT guy and see if we can jack him around a little bit. All right, I'm gonna cool this off, clean it off. And uh, we'll go meet with Mr. Garrett Vickery. Welcome back. A while ago, I, uh, I welded up a test plate. Actually, we were going to say that the camera guy produced you a test coupon. Coupon. Looks, looks sharp. You like coupons. Man, I was trying to spray. I, I hooked up some 92.8 gas, and I had, I swear, when I did my test settings, this thing was like screaming. But when I got over here, it was like, it's like fluttering back and forth to like a hot globular mm -hmm. process. But in any event, we did a, a root pass for you mm -hmm. in short arc. Normal stuff. Visually, we're there. Visually, we're okay. Just first glance on this, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It's got a little more reinforcement that I like. It's substantial. Robust. Yeah. We like that, but robust, don't Girth. we, Garrett? Yes, sir. All right, so... We have a different process that we mentioned one time when we were doing the ultrasound. So ultrasound was was like jelly on the belly, I think you said. Mm -hmm. Now you've got mag particle. We do. And so how does this work and how do we and what all can we find with it? Because I put you some goodies in here. I'm not going to tell you what they are. Mm -hmm. Visually, you said, oh, testing. you know, visually you said, hey, we're we're cool. Yeah. But what are we going to do? How are we going to find any flaws? How deep we're going to go? What, yeah. what, what can this thing do here? Okay. So we've got an electromagnet here, right? So I'm, there's a coil wound in here. Okay. And an interesting phenomenon, when you pass alternating current through a coil, you create a magnetic field that alternates with that current. So okay. when I charge this, I'm going to pass current through a coil in here, and it's going to create a magnetic field that travels through here like this. Kind of like at the scrap yard, that big boom that comes oh, yeah. down and picks yeah. up all the scrap, kind of just like that. When I press the button, I'm magnetizing. When I'm not, I'm not, right? And Did so, you turn, pardon? you turn your pacemaker off where you come in I don't. I don't have one. I do. <laughs> Does it? No, I'm just kidding. It's yeah. not, but that that would interfere with, it would, you gotta so, be careful around equipment like that. Would. This is the portable version, so it's a little more localized. There is a horizontal wet bench that utilizes this similar technology where we have a large 12, 16, 18 inch diameter coil, which makes a large magnetic field, which would interfere with the inner workings of some electronics, Ooh, yes. It's not, Safety first, Bob. Yeah, okay. We're non-destructive. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I am, yes, I like bench stuff. <laughs> 
tear stuff up. Yeah. So, all right, let's. So, so what is this guy here? You, you're, is this like a calibration? It, it is. It's a 10 pound test bar. And when I charge this, I need to make sure that the magnetic field that I'm making is strong enough to create a magnetic field that a, a crack, uh, an inclusion, we're, we're inspecting slightly subsurface here because the magnetic field goes into the material. Okay. But what we're looking for is a magnetic flux leakage. We're looking okay. for a break in that magnetic field somewhere. And so it won't happen very deep in the material, but slightly subsurface will cause that magnetic field to escape the material. Well, I and think grab. that's what I left you behind. So let's. Oh. Yep. Okay. Let's forge on. So I need to charge this within a two to six inch pole spacing. I want. Okay. I don't want my poles too far apart or too close. Okay. And then I need to lift this test block and rest it back gently. So I've created a strong enough magnetic field to lift 10 pounds. Okay. Okay. So then I know that I'm making that. I also need to make sure that my test piece is capable of being magnetized, right? I've okay. I've had some students that when they get a little mouthy in class, you know, I hand them a piece of aluminum and tell them to go do mag on it and see them stress on it for oh, 10, 15 man, minutes. <laughs> mess with the inspectors too. Yeah, huh? but hey, they'll never forget. <laughs> it's got to be magnetic. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what I got to do, when I charge this, my magnetic field lines run this way mm -hmm. and I need an indication to break that magnetic field. So when I'm testing this, I want to go 45 and 45. Okay. to make sure that I can get any possible orientation, right? Got you. And then I've got these magnetic particles here, just iron filings, very finely ground iron. It's like powder. Like powder mm -hmm. that has a red Color. dye. Okay. Yeah. Red dyes for discrimination, yeah. you can see it. Well, there's all kinds of colors, um, just whatever gives you the best contrasting background. Okay. And I just lightly dust my surface. I don't want to get too crazy because, see, the, I need to blow away my excess. You got you a, a puffer. I got a little puff, puff, puffer. Puff, puff. Puffer. Okay. Looking good so far. You, go, I, you would turn yeah, this here. Yeah. That's good. I appreciate it. Go the other direction. Well, how, how much of a range are you around the yoke? I mean, it's not strictly straight between it. Is I'm, it? I'm right in between. I don't okay. want to look out here. I don't want to look okay, out here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Keep that charged. Nothing too conspicuous yet. Oh. Uh-oh. Hello. What are you seeing there, old buddy? Right there on your crown, we've got quite the spider web going on. Hmm, I wonder what caused that. I don't know, camera guy. <laughs> Did you sneeze in the midst of your weld? Camera guy left you a little present there. Just going both directions here to make sure I get that to pop. Oh boy, yeah, that's it's like a half inch little spider web, little crater, crater crack. So they're kind of all over the place. Get my little inspection light out because I am an inspector as well. Oh my goodness, yeah. So those are lined up kind of nicely. Mm -hmm. You can kind of tell by the ripple pattern that something did happen in this weld. I mean, by the surface grain structure, it just looks strange and it does look crowned up a little bit, but still. Yeah. So what this is, and I, I've done this, and I don't remember if you still have the piece down there, but years ago I, I did like a one inch groove weld Mm -hmm. And I put a nice big old chunk of copper down low, started welding it, and in the initial passes, it mm -hmm. really cracked, really opened up. Mm -hmm. And then as I came out of it, they were like this. They were just, visually, you didn't see this yeah. when you first glanced at you it. Hit right? mm -hmm. You hit no. them. I mean, you, that's, and that was the intent. Mm -hmm. So we can keep this piece around, mm -hmm. and we can even buff on it even more, uh, hit it with the wire wheel, and took the silicon glass along the toe mm -hmm. and across the... Crown. Anyway, I think, I don't remember, I don't think it was done with mag particle. I think they did it with the Zyglo mm -hmm. uh, dye penetrant. And man, that thing lit up like a big old spider web. Man. But visually, in just mm -hmm. straight light, you couldn't detect all of that. Right. And then when they got it in there, so that copper, 
you know, you can create some solidification cracks. It gets in dilution, and then when it, the weld pool solidifies, bang, things happen. Yeah. Now, I wouldn't want to make one where it was just so obvious. This one was almost a little too obvious. It did jump. So, it did jump. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, cool process. So you, so this is anything that's strictly magnetized. Let me ask mm -hmm. you, uh, the stainless steel grades that are magnetized, you can still do all of those. Yes. It, what would suffer on that is the depth that I could inspect. Okay. Yeah. So how deep can you go with this process? Ah. If, if this crack was like an eighth of an inch or halfway through this three-eighths well, would mm -hmm. it show up? It, ha it still has to be open to the surface, doesn't yeah. it? Or does it? It doesn't have to be, no. It can be subsurface and covered by the surface. Just um, because it's breaking the magnetic field. Right. Okay. Right. Well, um, on our wet bench, we can get up to 0.45 underneath the surface because we've got a systems check where we test that. There's a flaw at a known depth, and if it shows at varying currents, we apply, say, 1,000 amps, 2,000 amps. God, yeah, man. we don't play. Really? <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and at each step, you'll see further and further down in the material because you're making a stronger and stronger magnetic field. Okay. So, you've got your poofer here, and yep. you've already blown all the excess stuff off mm -hmm. of there. And, but not all of it because those are like now settled down into that surface. Yes. Right? Yes. And so that would tell you that this part is still magnetized, right? And if I gave this back to you, to go weld on, how fun is it to weld on something still magnetized? Your art get a little jumpy? I don't like it. I don't yeah, like it. Gets it gets a jumping around. Yeah, and so like I don't I'm like making a bad your day, man. Yeah, I don't like making your job harder. I don't want you to make my job harder. So we're just gonna. All we have to do is apply that magnetic field and remove it away abruptly. And this is our um, residual magnetism gauge called a Gauss gauge. And if I drag that over this material, see I've got as close to zero as I can. Can you re-magnetize it and show that yeah. that thing going crazy? Sure. What's happening is this part's got magnetic domains in there. Right. And when I'm doing that, I'm aligning those magnetic domains. So even though that shows a couple of lines, mm -hmm. does it, it, I mean, what's the scale? Indus minus 10, plus 10, what's it actually In Industry standard is less than three gauss <laughs> is acceptable after I finish. And so you see the plus and minus, that, ref that reference is north and south pole. Okay. Right? So over here, north, over here, south, right? Okay. Now I come down on here, give it a little twist, twist, pull. And what I'm doing is I'm misaligning those magnetic domains to no longer magnetize it. And see, now we have nada. Sweet. Yeah. Interesting. And you, it, have this, you have this plugged into the wall circuit over here. Right yeah, 110. Is mm -hmm. there... I'm, I'm assuming there's battery modes of this. Yes, and there's actually ones that don't even have anything. It's just you can use two permanent magnets and stick them down right on there. They're not as uh, sensitive, but can still perform that. Yeah, because the magnetic fields communicate, and if there's a break, really cheap process, Bob. I mean, third world countries, I mean, places, all this setup right here, under $1,000. And it's simple to run. Wow. Um, now getting the certification things to do certified work that's different but you can i mean a crack's a crack you know whether right. you want to keep using that piece or not all right interesting interesting that you know you can do that depth thing mm -hmm. so could i go in here and like cosmetically do things to this weld to clean it up where there's no nothing, nothing breaking open the surface? to the surface yeah. and then resubmit it to you for your students and then they use it as a part that, yeah because visually they're going to say you know, that's pretty good looking root. Oh yeah, tied in. It's tied in. It's not as it doesn't have the reinforcement that yeah. I like. Yeah. But and then, you know, so visually we got a, a weld, and they'd say, mm -hmm. okay, well there's nothing wrong with it, and mm -hmm. then they go play and find those cracks. Yeah. Well, I may do that. I don't know what I would do it with just yet, because if I lightly TIG weld over this to kind of seal them, then mm -hmm. that's going to show different. It's gonna it's gonna be a whole different ripple pattern mm -hmm. and all that. It's like I'd need to go dry wash over the top of it with a TIG cap or something, mm -hmm. and maybe blend it. Maybe do a big old figure eight lace or something and show that in there. Maybe they mm -hmm. maybe that would distract them. Yeah. So well, I'll give it a try. That was uh, that was entertaining and educational. 
You got some cool stuff here. You got a your pooper. A little air. A little air. You little got powder. jelly on the belly. And you got <laughs> iron powder dust. You got all the cool stuff, man. We got. We need tools. So what's ne what's next? What are we gonna do next? Next. Eddie, we haven't done Eddie. We could do current. some Eddie Current. Yeah. Well, I, I could actually do Eddie Current on that, and we could find those cracks with Eddie Current and show you what that looks like on a scope. Uh, do you suggest a different type of part? Aluminum. I mean, Aluminum is preferred. Okay. Steel gets a little tough because that magnetic field and um, with eddy current we're using magnetic fields to induce currents into okay. a material and measure the difference in that, cur that current creation. Okay. So uh, conductive materials are better like aluminum what rather type, than what ferromagnetic. What type of joint configuration or weldment do you want with aluminum? Does it I, matter? No, I can do anything, yeah. We Thickness, got, are you limited by if I do eighth inch? lap weld or I mean eighth inch is fair I mean, it needs to be kind of small because eddy current also is is kind of like the backside of magnetic particle theory just a little bit added on to it we're still using electricity and magnetism um, but in a different way so it's limited on depth yes but with uh, conductive material um, eighth inch would be fair and you can do any joint you want because I got a little surface probe that has a very small footprint so I can just scan around on that material. okay well we'll we'll, uh, we'll work on that I'll get with you when we get some free time and uh, we'll create something that visually appealing and you can do a good test on. Uh, again, I hope this was educational. It sure was for me. I learned quite a bit right here. I'd done this before, but it was with dye penetrant. I wanted to do it because I wanted to see this. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been around this process a lot in my, in my career, so I'll, I'll blend this puppy over and we'll resubmit it and play with it some more. Uh, again, I hope you found this educational. Mr. Garrett Vickery with our NDT program here at Cali College. I'm Bob Moffat. Thanks for watching Well.com.